<coughs> in private conversations and communications. Move, <coughs> excuse my throat. Numerous members of Congress have reported to me their firm conviction that their telephone conversations and activities are the subject of surveillance by the FBI. Much, much as was done last fall by the military intelligence agencies. Several members have made available to me detailed information confirming my own experience which substantiates these allegations. <coughs> it is my intention to make proper use of this, uh, this information in the very near future. The irony and the danger of this situation is that many of these allegations are difficult su to substantiate without the services of a first-rate investigatory agency such as the FBI. When the chief law enforcement agency of the nation violates the law, then we're indeed in trouble. More important than charges and countercharges, however, is the fundamental fact that a substantial number of members are firmly convinced that their phones are tapped by the FBI. In a recent poll of public figures, fully one quarter reported that they have reason to suspect their phones were tapped. I believe the fear of phone tapping is as dangerous as a fact, for it can only chill the kind of free discourse we must have if we are to continue as a free society. Nowhere, nowhere, is free speech more vital than in the halls of Congress. It is the very essence of this organization, which is the People's Forum. The idea that members may be intimidated by fear of having their conversations overheard is one that is reprehensible. All of us love this free society. The basis of the freedoms in this country are in the Bill of Rights. And I'm afraid that the director has violated the Bill of Rights. Without our vigilance, the Bill of Rights would become a mere scrap of paper. And I don't intend, as a leader of the House of Representatives, to preside over the liquidation of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. For these reasons, I again suggest to Mr. Mitchell that he ask for the resignation of Mr. Hoover. Do you have hard proof, Mr. Boggs, that Congressional telephones have been tapped, or <coughs> is this just a matter of widespread suspicion on Capitol Hill? Uh, Mr. Clark, I shall uh, uh, have further statements uh, as I go along. I have a group of very competent lawyers researching the whole subject. Mr. Boggs, could, could you tell me what has been your own experience with the FBI? <coughs> no, sir. Will you introduce that? <coughs> no, sir. You said earlier this morning you've been placed under surveillance. <coughs> Well, I stand on that statement. Would you make the statement General again for the cameras? The Attorney General categorically denies that uh, any wiretapping is taking place against the telephone of Congress. Well, if he categorically denies it, I categorically say it is true. Do you think any... he's a liar, then? Mm -hmm. Use any of... Uh, you said that. I didn't say it. Are you saying that without that investigative force, you do have firm facts to show that, you, that these phones have been tapped? Or, or no, I didn't say that. I said that... Uh, any number of members of Congress have come to me and have told me that in their judgment, their phones are tapped. Now, this is, now just a minute, if you don't mind, let me answer your question. This is a very hard matter to prove because you would need the FBI to prove it. Uh, however, as I said a moment ago, I have a group of lawyers working on the matter, and I expect to have a further statement in the near future. Why, Mr. Marks, would you assume that telephone tapping in Congress would be done by the FBI and not some other federal agency or some other <laughs> party. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, tapping was done by the military and surveillance was done by the military in the case of Congressman Mitka, Mitka and uh, Senator Stevenson and others. What I'm saying is not new. But, but how can the suspicions of individual congressmen be directed to the FBI? Because it's the agency of the government charged with responsibility under the law of the white tab. Can you tell us how many members have come to you and said they're lying to No, I cannot. Mr. Mark, how I, I, I will say this, though, that uh, it's a substantial number. Would you, would you repeat for the camera your own experience with surveillance? 
No, I, I, don't, I don't care to do that. You have any Mark, other? can you tell us whether you feel your phone was tapped? I don't have any doubt about it. Can you tell us why? What happened? There? I told you that I'd have a further statement. I'm not going to elaborate any more on it this time. I mean in your particular case. I'm not going to elaborate on my particular case. Matter of clickings on the telephone or I'm, noises on the telephone. I'm not going to elaborate. Do you have any, any evidence of what the information gathered was used for? What kind of evidence was gathered? Yes, I do, but I'm not going to elaborate on that either. Mr. Bob, you very strongly uh, do a parallel between Hoover and uh, Adolf Hitler. No, I did not. Now, hold on. I didn't do anything of the kind. I said that, I said that the violation of the Bill of Rights and some of the tactics that have been alleged as a result of these documents that uh, were stolen and have come to light were comparable to what Hitler did. I did not compare Mr. Hoover to Hitler. And I wouldn't dare do it. Mr. Hoover's a very honorable man. How would you characterize his personal relationship? It's always been very pleasant. But when you get as old as Mr. Hoover is, and you make as many mistakes as he's made, at the times come for him to retire. It just isn't right for an old man to violate the Bill of Rights of, of, of our Constitution. Well, it's been documented. Read the stories in the Washington Post and the uh, New York Times. Why is tapping being carried out with the knowledge of the White House? Do you know what <coughs> I told you that I was going to document that my statement about why tapping late. I'm not going to say anything further about why tapping. Are you uh, going to make this a political issue? Of course not. This is not a political issue. This is a question of whether or not we maintain our freedoms. It's got nothing to do with politics. Mr. Byers, how does it happen, sir, that, that you have decided do this yourself. I mean, if other people feel strongly about this, why are they not joining you? Well, uh, number one, I'm the majority leader of the House of Representatives. It's my responsibility. Number two, uh, as I said a moment ago, uh, I don't think that my colleagues elected me to preside over the liquidation of the Bill of Rights. Mr. Bowers, why won't you produce your evidence now? Because I want it thoroughly documented by competent lawyers. Uh, that's all, that's all, gentlemen. Yeah. <coughs> Do we have copies of our papers?